Hey there, Miranda Wilson here with another fun lesson idea from Science Journal for Kids. Today, we're going to focus on a really cool activity making robots. Robots can seem complicated and technical to a lot of students, but this activity is designed to be simple and fun. It can be done with all ages, but if you have little kids or elementary age students, they'll probably need a bit more supervision. I found this activity on a website called Research Parent. It's just a parent with some scientific research experience sharing fun and educational activities to do with younger kids. The materials for this activity can be purchased through the affiliate links on the website or on your own, but all the materials are super cheap. We're talking less than $8. And I'm guessing you probably have a lot of the supplies you'll need, except the motors to power your robots. If you have a robotics team at your school, i check with them first to see if they have any extra supplies. So let's dive in and build a robot. I picked this simple robot car because it looked like fun, but there are four other beginner robot designs on the website and all use similar materials. So you could really do any of them. There are detailed instructions with pictures to help for each of them too. Step one, make the body of your car. The exact dimensions are on the website, but just keep in mind that it needs to be light enough to move but big enough to stretch a taut rubber band from the motor to the wheel axles so that your robot can actually move. Step two, cut the axles from straws and wooden skewers. The front axle straw gets cut in half and a hole gets punched through the body of the car to make room for the rubber band. Make sure the rubber band doesn't rub against your foam or the motor might not be strong enough to turn it. That happened to me. Step three, Use a hot glue gun to glue the wooden skewer onto the bottle caps. Make sure your bottle caps are all the same size. You'll also need to make sure that you glue the skewer into the center of the bottle cap so your car isn't all wobbly. You may need to hold the skewer and the bottle cap together until the glue dries. This might be a step where you need to help your students. Step four. Now comes the circuits. You'll need a piece of wire about four inches long if you wanna use a switch to turn your robot car on and off. You don't need a switch if you're willing to just pull out your batteries to make your car stop. Strip the insulation off of both ends of the wire. If you happen to have a soldering iron at school, you can connect everything using that, but it seems to work just fine to wrap the wire around the leads, and it might be easier for younger students. Also, you can then just disassemble and build other robots if you want. Finally, connect the switch, the motor, and the battery pack together to form a circuit. Test it to make sure that when you flip the switch that the motor actually spins. If it doesn't, check your wires to make sure they're connected snugly. Step 5. Time for assembly. Figure out which way your motor is spinning and make sure to arrange it on your car so that it will move forward instead of backwards. You'll want to glue your motor so that the motor shaft lines up with the front axle and the rubber band that's threaded through the foam. If you have trouble with your rubber band falling off while the motor's spinning, the website recommends cutting off the end of a pencil eraser and putting it on the very end of the motor shaft as a barrier. Next, you'll need to position your switch. The website adds an extra piece of foam, but your switch can really go anywhere. Remember to glue it down and remember to glue down your battery holder too. I didn't even need my extra foam pieces because of the size of my rubber band. Step six, test and decorate your robot. The robot I demonstrated building today doesn't actually roll very well because I used heavier AA batteries to power it. I had them around the house. So unfortunately, my robot is actually a bit too heavy for the motor I have, but that doesn't mean that yours will be. Just make sure to use AAA batteries and you should be just fine. This activity would go great along with our article titled, Can a Robotic Arm Be Controlled by the Brain? Researchers tested a brain-computer interface that controlled a robotic arm for tetraplegia patients. They found that allowing a person to control their robotic arm with microelectrodes in the brain was good, but it worked even better when the robotic arm included touch sensors that allowed the patient to feel a sense of touch. We have both upper and lower reading levels for this article, so even if you have elementary school students, they'll be able to read about this research. Don't forget to take a look at our videos at the bottom of the article page when you're planning your class time. There's always a video meant to introduce the topic of the article to your students. 
For each adapted article, we also provide an audio version of the article being read for those students who might need some extra help with their reading skills. You can access our audio versions on the webpage for each adapted article or on the Science Journal for Kids YouTube channel. That's all for today. If you'd like more teaching tips and ideas for lesson planning, please check out the audio or video versions of our Lesson Ideas podcast. Also, make sure to check out our Ask a Scientist videos for short interviews with some of our researchers. You can find them on our YouTube channel. If you have questions or comments, please share them in the feedback form on our website or head to Facebook to join our official community group. You can also sign up for our free monthly newsletter to learn about our latest content. And as always, please visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.